Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm excited to bring you episode 19 to my series, Inside the Mind of a Diamond. Today we're specifically going to be looking at the situations here on the screen, so if you ever feel the need to only see a certain number or two, you can skip to that part of the video. In addition, by the time I've posted this, I will be live streaming at OP Live in Dallas, so be sure to check that out on Twitch. Link will be on the screen and in the description below. In addition, if you guys enjoy this series, be sure to leave a like on the video, and with that said, let's take a look at our first clip. All right, so let's talk about roaming here for a bit. Uh, when you guys set up for your roam, there's two ways that you can either do it. You can first start as far away from the objective as possible, which is typically what you do as like a caver or something. Kind of work your way back as the time winds down or as you get calls from your teammates, like they're in trench, they're in garage, you know, all that kind of stuff, and then you, you kind of take your route from there. Uh, or the second thing you can do is set up in a position that is like the first entry point of attackers. So I set up in the game room because I figured that with a downstairs garage push, there was going to be at least one attacker that busted in through the game room to start their attack down blue. That wasn't the case, the Ash started from the second floor, ended up dying, trying to rush blue and, you know, just doing Ash thing, so. Uh, from there, I went ahead and just kind of crouch walked my way towards the west side uh, to get an angle on Trench. Now, if you guys don't have a dire reason to get to a certain location, like if your teammates aren't uh, desperate for you to make a flank, then there's no reason to, to walk or even run. Um, just stay crouched and just kind of creep up and listen for where you think the attackers are going to be, especially if your teammates aren't giving callouts or anything like that. Uh, best thing is going to be your ears, and uh, I ended up finding my way down the uh, bottom of West Main Stairs and then just kind of peeked there for intel to see if, uh, if anyone was holding an angle from the trench as... You know, there will typically be someone watching flank here, and there wasn't. Um, but then I heard someone far hallway, and so I just kind of set up for the, uh, you know, hard angle and got the kill there. Now, I'm playing a placement match here, which is why this enemy team did not react appropriately. They literally didn't care that I just killed someone on this side of the map. Um, but what I did here was just kind of set myself up for the, the countermeasures. Uh, after you get a kill, especially flanking, the attacking team, you know, with 40 seconds left to go, is probably going to try and kill you off really quickly so that they can get on with the rest of their push. This attacking team didn't care that I just killed a guy on this side of the map, and so me, being me, just kind of walked up and picked up three kills because they were all too busy doing their own thing. So in a Platinum Diamond type match, expect that once you get that first kill, you basically um, expose yourself like, oh hey, this person is on flank. Uh, just know that you are going to be met with aggression, typically. People are going to try and hunt you down because they don't want you to be able to come in in the last five seconds and stop a plant or simply just, you know, stop that, that last minute push. Okay, so peeking for intel isn't a hard technique. It's just something that a lot of people don't implement into their style of play. Frankly, I don't do it every time, but for angles that I know exist that I've died by before, I will typically peek for intel to make sure that nobody's there. In this case, I have died by this angle. The fact that someone can sit in that doorway and get an angle uh, on the bar is something that I have had experience with and so I knew that that angle existed. I peeked for intel because I figured someone could have been holding flank and fortunately it was a blackbeard so very glad I did that. Uh, I went ahead and dropped prone because I'd rather start my bullets through his torso and not his shield because uh, I have more faith to, to get a kill that way. Um, but just know that like, if you guys are wondering where should I be peeking for intel or when should I be pre-firing, all that kind of stuff, that comes with simple game experience and map knowledge. Dying by angles and using angles yourself um, are going to be the only ways you're going to know when to peek for intel and when to pre-fire certain angles. So don't be discouraged if you don't know like where to do it. It just kind of comes with practice. I've died by that angle several times, so I knew to just peek for intel, see if anyone was there. Fortunately, it was about Blackbeard, and I was able to get him before he could kill me. So, use this strategy, pay attention to angles, peek for intel, see if anyone's there, and then go about with your pre-fire. When defending the diffuser, it's important to A, keep yourself within earshot to make sure that no one's diffusing it without you being able to see them, and then B, you want to be able to get that line of sight immediately, um, which is kind of hard because you're trying to hide yourself in the event that a defender decides to forsake the diffuser and try and find you. You want to make sure that they have a hard time finding you, um, but then you also want to set yourself up in a very protected area. Being behind this reinforced wall here wasn't protective enough for me because Anyone can hop out of that bathroom window and then jump here into the small tower and so I went ahead and pushed into the dining hall because this corner was reinforced on both sides. So sure I'm overexposed to anyone that does actually push dining, like I'm not holding a pixel peek or anything, but it allows me to only focus on one angle, which is the guy pushing from dining. 
I don't really know if I have much to say about rushing sight besides keeping your gun up and always ready to shoot people. Uh, I mean, if the uh, if the rush goes properly like it does here, the defending team won't know what's happening and they'll rush like worker ants to their to their queen, their queen bee, who's eating a bullet on sight. Eating, eating, something like that, right? Vocabulary, I don't know. Um, but heck, <laughs> if you guys take sight, just be aware that the enemy team is going to be pissed and probably going to sprint back to sight thinking, oh my gosh, we got to reclaim what is ours and you can capitalize and you can you can clap them all so um, this was more of a joke because there's really no technique behind rushing sight besides keeping your, your reticle up and keep yourself moving and ready to, to frag out if you guys haven't already picked up on the fact that aggression goes a long way in Rainbow Six then you are severely missing out uh, confidence and aggression seem to work better than well thought out strategies sometimes and I mean, this is coming from an Ash main, and so obviously I have my own little bias there, but I'm being serious when confidence really stands out in Rainbow Six, because most people are pretty timid, if you haven't noticed, about saving their life. Since this is a, you know, one life per round type of deal, everyone seems to be decently timid when it comes to, like, what they're peeking, how much they're moving, or, you know, heck, even when they should, like, just full send it into sight. And what I want you guys to just experiment with is that confidence experiment with the aggression of just full sending into sight and testing your ability to frag out and you know find enemies quickly um, this may not be something that you have you know do in ranked uh, right off the bat you know since you know you're, you're I guess threatening elo at that point but definitely something that you should consider you know just going into sight and relying on your reaction time relying on your gun skill to be able to find uh, an opponent that you didn't previously drone and just kind of trying your luck at at that 1v1 you know situation it will really make you a better player the ability to train yourself to have a faster reaction time and to find you know that touch of color that's out of place you know for someone that's hiding behind like the dining room table here on chalet whenever you get the chance especially with an opportunity like this with there's no barbed wire I would actually recommend try full sending it if it's not like match point or something test out your ability you might surprise yourself you might get several frags sure you may be killed in the process but definitely try practicing this aggression and it will make you a better player overall so i want to let you guys in on a little roaming location secret if you guys hang out by stairs basically on any map more than likely you're gonna have a field day and the reason i say this is because a you can hear nearly everything going on in the map because sound travels to the uh, you know nearest opening and since stairs, you know is just one giant opening between two floors You'll be able to kind of tell more accurately, you know, which floor people are approaching from Second thing is a lot of these stairs in rainbow six have landings basically the stairs go up halfway They make a 180 turn and go up, you know the the rest to the next floor uh, going the other way, but they all have that flat landing and People will typically place like a frost mat on there, you know, to get someone that's checking above, you know, if they're approaching from below, their their eyes are trained on the up top to make sure that no one's peeking that, and instead they, they fall prey to a, a frost mat. Well, that's same for, for people that are just laying prone. You can literally just chill on like the staircases of, you know, the main lobby stairs on chalet, or heck, even the red or white stairs on cafe. You can just chill there, and since people are always so concerned about like the hatch on red or the balcony on white you can just chill there and get easy frags from people that are distracted all right so for the final clip let's talk about how to deal with shields something that's very aggravating because siege is a one headshot kill mechanic and there are shields in this game and it just kind of sucks sometimes so first thing resist the urge to put your entire magazine into an operator like clash yes she's very annoying to deal with but shooting her isn't going to help you at all. Instead, train your eyes on what's behind her, given that most defenders are going to use her shield um, and the transparent abilities that it has and, you know, preemptively shoot you uh, on a nice quick peek. So, be ready for an opponent on the other side of the shield, um, you know, more than the actual clash herself. Because you'll be able to hear the audio cue of the clash, you know, switching to her pistol. And yeah, it's pretty fast. It's a very quick transition, but the safer bet is to keep your eyes locked on what's behind clash rather than clash herself. Second thing, dealing with shields in general is pretty easy if you can get them to round a corner. 
uh, creating that uh, separation of visibility is really, really pertinent to being able to take down a shield operator because they're typically pretty aggressive because they have a shield and you don't, and so they, they typically push you thinking that you're hopeless and can't fire back or anything like that. But your best countermeasure is to get them to round a corner and then preemptively knife uh, once you get that audio cue that they're, you know, just on the other side. So that's what we do with the Clash. That's what we do with the Blitz. Preemptively knife corners, get them to round that, you know, and lose that visibility so that you have the best chance at knocking that shield away from them. That's all I have for today, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, give me a follow over on Twitter and Instagram. I would greatly appreciate it. And then I'm probably live over on Twitch, so go give me a follow over on there. Link in the description below. Would love to hang out with you guys and talk with you in the chat. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.